Hi guys, today we are talking about distributive shock. Now shock in general means that we are not getting enough blood flow to the body. Uh, and of course, um, the different types of shock, we, we are looking at what caused it. Okay. So distributive shock, it's caused by an immune or an inflammatory inflammatory response. that's actually inferior, interfering with the vascular tone. Okay. So that's leading to massive, massive peripheral vasodilation. So if we're not getting adequate blood flow, it's not because of a volume problem in this case, it's not the heart problem. It's the vessels have actually gotten bigger. So in comparison to that, we don't have the pressure we need. Right. So, so that's what distributive shock is. Uh, there are a couple different types. Um, the first one is anaphylactic uh, from an allergic reaction. Um, so we're going to see inflammatory cytokines. Um, uh, the second is neurogenic, um, possibly from a spinal cord injury or loss of SNS activity. And third is septic from a systemic infection. So we have inflammatory cytokines. Now let's talk about how we're going to assess these patients. Uh, it depends on the type. So again, for the anaphylactic, these are the symptoms we're expecting. We're expecting to see hives, rash, swelling of the arms, the trunk, the face or the mouth. Um, they've had some sort of exposure to an allergen. We're gonna see decrease in SpO2, decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate, increased respiratory weight rate. So we're going to see wheezing um, and this warm flushed skin. So again, that's for anaphylactic. Treatment for that would be epinephrine, which is going to relax the airway muscles, uh, corticosteroids to decrease the inflammation and bronchodilators to protect the airway. Another type is neurogenic. The symptoms we're going to see from that um, is the spinal cord. Is we're going to have seen a spinal cord injury in the last 24 hours. Uh, warm, flushed lower extremities, decreased blood pressure, and decreased heart rate occasionally. Um, we also might see priapism due to the vasodilation. So again, that's for neurogenic. And the treatment, we're going to do therapeutic hypothermia, which is neuroprotective. Okay, now the third type that we're looking at is septic. Uh, the symptoms we're going to see here is decreased level of consciousness, decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate, warm flushed skin, increased temperature, and signs and symptoms of an infection. We're going to treat with antibiotics, blood cultures first. We're going to give IV fluids uh, to increase the preload, corticosteroids if vasopressors are ineffective, um, and for decompensated shock, we're going to see symptoms like refractory, low blood pressure, decreased level of consciousness, decreased SpO2, decreased heart rate. And treatment for that would be vasopressors and intubation for airway protection. So again, we're talking about shock here. Uh, shock is decreased blood flow to the body, and in this case, we're specifically talking about distributive shock, which is caused by some sort of immune or inflammatory response that's interfering with the vascular tone. Okay, so we're seeing this dilation of the blood vessels, uh, and that's the cause of shock in this case. Uh, so thanks, guys. It was great to share this with you, and happy nursing. This has been another episode of NCLEX Flash Notes Podcast, your no-fluff study companion for NCLEX success, providing exceptionally clear and concise content to conquer the NCLEX exam. Now, if you want to follow along while you listen to this show, you can head over to nclexbook.com to get our free ebook, NCLEX Flash Notes, with 77 must-know NCLEX nursing topics. And as a bonus, you'll receive 16 full color nursing cheat sheets. Don't wait. Visit nclexbook.com today. That's nclexbook, N-C-L-E-X-B-O-O-K.com. Happy nursing.